But what I tell everybody who enters the building is that you should forget about everything you know about teaching. Because it really starts with what you know about learning. And uh, if you think about that and you see what Agora is doing, well, we don't have a learning process. Uh, we don't have any course. We have a learning process, of course, but it's without courses, it's without classes, it's without timetables, it's without age groups. And um, we learn children to set and achieve their own goals. And, well, four years ago we had like 30 students and it's, it's 250 at the moment. So we're growing and we're growing. If, if it was up to the people around us, we'd grow even faster. But, well, we're not up to that job yet because it's about quality as well, of course. Um, well, I want to tell you a story about how we stopped teaching and it's going to be a story about becoming a successful school based on inspiration and motivation. And um, as you can see on the screen, we, we believe that a school has to be a good mix between Harvard University where you can get all the knowledge of the world, well everybody with an internet connection can do that, so every school can be, be that. It should be also a bit of Buddhist monastery, a place where everybody feels at ease and can be himself and feel welcome. And it also should be the biggest creative laboratory you can imagine. So it should, you should be able to, to build a go-kart, a robot, a nice sweater or a piece of pants. And, and on top of that, we should enable children to, that school has to feel like a marketplace as well. A place where you can debate, where you can interact, where you can see new things and get inspired by others. Or even better, inspire others. That, that's what it's all about. And, and it should help. It, it of course helps when it feels and looks like Disneyland. A place where you can be happy and be amazed and get inspired and feel welcome. Feel welcome by the staff. Because, because think about what the staff is doing in Disneyland and what the teachers are doing at school. That's the total opposite. <laughs> so, uh, since I've been working for Agra, and it's, I've been in education since the year 2000, and I'm working here now for my fourth year. And since I'm working here, the one thing I really started to learn here is that we should trust fully in the fact that children want to learn. And if you doubt this fact, well, you're selling them short. You're really selling them short. And of course, when I give these lectures, a lot of people are getting question marks above their head. You can always almost see them. But I always tell them that what they are, um, what they are doubting is that children don't want to learn what they want to learn. Them. But that doesn't mean children don't want to learn. They always want to learn. And we should adjust to that, to inspire them and be great. So, when I started in 2000 as a teacher, they told me that I had to do methods of differentiation in the classroom. And I don't know if you know the proper uh, explanation of that, but I've brought it with me. It's the process of finding the derivative or rate of change of a function. And uh, the practical technique of differentiation can be carried out by purely algebraic manipulations using three basic derivatives for rules of operation and the knowledge of how to manipulate functions. And when I tell this, my classroom reacts at the same way as you are reacting now because they're getting a lot of question marks but I tell them that I'm the mathematics teacher this year and I have to tell them how methods of differentiation work so I give them some examples for instance if there is a function fx is x to the power of n then the derivative of that will be n x to the power of n minus 1 and I still see some question marks so I brought an even simpler example suppose I put uh, 9 in the place of the n, then the derivative will be 9x to the power of 8. And at this point uh, in my lessons, I never got this far. Because like halfway, I had to police <laughs> the whole classroom. And the reason for that is quite easy. Because at my previous school, where I had to do this, we had a great schedule guy who made the roster for next school year, and he already did that in May, and he didn't know any of the students. And we had a great algebraic method, a book. And when you combine those two, that algebraic method and the schedule I have with my children tells me that I have to do this lecture on Monday, the 3rd of August or the 3rd of January. And we don't take the kids in acquaintance. So that's the main problem of education. So if then it's not wrong and strange that I had to do the police office uh, as a job. And it, it gets really interesting because what I'm doing then is saying to a couple of students, hey, shut up, I know you're smart, but he's stupid and you have to be silent because otherwise he wouldn't get the explanation. And to the stupid guy I say, well, I know you're stupid, but just write everything down, maybe I'm able to explain you after school. And then we're asking ourselves why children are annoying other children. I, I started it. 
And that wasn't the reason why I came in, in education. I would have become a police officer if I wanted to do stuff like that. So we need to get that out of there. And that's why we don't have any groups at Agra. We only give lectures on a voluntary basis. And most of those lectures are organized by students, by students who want to know this stuff, who are up to know it. So um, if we have a look at this video, you see my, my daughter and she's riding a bike. And I brought this video because when she was like, well, at a certain point, one of my neighbors brought the bike and she said, well, my daughter's name is Alice. And she said, well, when Alice is bigger, she might be able to ride it. Here it is. And that was at the point that my daughter had a tricycle, you know, with the pedals on the, fur, on the front wheel. And she couldn't get them around because, well, too much friction or too the less muscles or something like that. And um, my daughter just said to me, well, that he make it fit. And she was correct. So I uh, lowered everything down, put her on it, and started running. And you know where it is. After 15 minutes, they cry, you can get it, go inside. And the day after that, she came up to me again. Please help me to ride the bike again. And the same thing happened. Like, after 20 minutes, she cried, we got, went inside. And on the fourth day, she came up to me and said, I want to try to ride the bike again. And after five minutes, she said, well, stay here, Dad. And she just cycled this, this piece. Without any side, never had any side wheels on anything. And why I'm mentioning this is because I had one of my neighbors coming over immediately after this. And he asked me, how old is she? And I said, she's two and eight months. And he didn't say anything. He went inside, got his five-year-old son, got the bike of his five-year-old son, got him on it and started running. And in the evening he asked me, how often did you do that with Alice? And I said, well, every day, like 15 minutes. And he started to do that for two weeks. And result, his son hated biking. If that stupid neighbor of mine would have asked me if my daughter was able to ice skate, he could have been a proud father. Mm -hmm. If that stupid neighbor of mine would have waited up until the summer, because then lots of children are riding that bike around this square, then his son would have asked him to do it. And then he had to put in lesser and lesser effort to teach him to ride a bike. And we are making that same mistake in education because we are looking at children and comparing them every day, every day. If I would uh, learn my daughter how to ride a bike like we do it in education, I would have told her, well, find 20 other students in the same age group who want to ride their bike. But we don't do that. And when we put those 20 students together, it would took, took a lot of effort for me to teach them all how to ride a bike. Far more effort than uh, this way. So we should get this into education. And what I'm seeing is that we are doing it wrong at home already with everybody. And the older people get, the more they tend to compare to that average. I've never seen a mother standing over her crawling infant and telling her that she should stand up because the neighbor child who is two weeks younger is already standing. I've never saw anybody do that. But when my daughter was five years old and I went to kindergarten to pick her up, one of the other uh, uh, mothers there asked me, is your daughter already writing a little bit, uh, reading a little bit? And I said, well, I lied. I said, no, because when I would have said yes, she would immediately start practicing with her own child. But she shouldn't do that because the magic isn't there at that moment. You know? and, and that's what we do in education. So education shouldn't be about starting at the same time. It should be being proud and finishing at the same time. And every student wants to learn. Every student wants to read. Every student wants to ride the bike. And there is a certain point and an age that everybody will notice. So just focus on that. So at Agora, we don't start something because you should, but because you're inspired and motivated to do things you hate, falling with the bike, for instance, to achieve things you like, because that's, that's what it's about. So well, on this picture, you see a bridge. And I learned yesterday that it's in South Africa. I've never been there. And um, suppose I take my wife there for the holidays. And after an hour and a half of hike, we get at this bridge. And she asks me, well, she immediately will tell me, Rob, that's never going to happen. <laughs> I'm never going to cross this bitch. And then I'm going to do the same thing as I did with mathematics. I'm going to soften things up, you know. At first, I was writing mathematics like 15 years ago on a chalkboard. After that, with, with a pen, and after that, I made PowerPoint presentations. And after that, we made videos just to soften things up. They still hate them off, but... 
So I'm going to soften things up for my wife. I'm going to tell her that the best restaurant she's ever been eating at is at the other side of the bridge. It has the best view ever. And I'm trying to get my wife over the bridge that way. And my wife will tell me that the food at the hotel yesterday evening was great and wasn't that bad, so we can return. And then we go back to the hotel, in my case. So suppose this day is going to happen again. So or, or, or we could travel back in time. Then my wife would come up to me during the holidays and say, well, I've been talking to the neighbor here. And she says, you can have a great walk up to a great restaurant with a great view where they have my favorite food. Rob, should we walk up there? Well, my wife's map reading skills aren't that good that she's noticing the bridge. So we're going to walk. I'm going to walk behind her. Just follow her up to the bridge. Well, she's never going to admit that she's wrong. She's going to say, Rob, cover my eyes. Hold my hands. I at least want to try to cross it. Or she tries to find a way through the ravine. One of those. But we will, she will never admit that we have to go back to the hotel. Never. And that's because it's her goal. And we took her route to the goal. And that's the big difference that we do at Agra. At Agra, children can work on their goals. We, we, we start to work with them on what they want to learn. And they want to be successful in life. So if they want to learn anything to graduate. But on the first day, why should we talk about that? Hmm. On the second day, why should we talk about that? We sh should, learn, uh, should help them to be successful learners and be excited about that. Because then we never have to please them. Um, so students want to know the curriculum at the end and because they want to be successful. It's as easy as that. And we have faith in that moment. Just like I have faith that every child wants to learn the bike, to bike at a certain point. And I have faith that the same thing with the diploma. And I don't have a child in here who starts working on that too late. I never have any child. Of course there are children who, are, who start later than others. But the motivation is there, so they can work harder. Well, I've been talking about my family. I don't know these infants, but uh, I have this picture in here because the sponges in front of these babies are the same size as the sponges in their head. And we call those sponges brains. And those two are natural products. And if you have a sponge, you know that if you put it in water, that it sucks up water. And you can take water with you. And the brain works exactly the same way. If you put it in circumstances where it can suck up knowledge, it will. So that's the only thing we need to learn children and students and learners. So that's what we need to learn everybody. How do I put my sponge in the right circumstances? That's, that's the big question. And you need to learn who you are to do that. For instance, if I want to learn Spanish by a book, well, you should have a big laugh because everybody knows I throw a book in the corner within a couple of days. But if I'm going to tell you that I want to learn Spanish together with you and that we're going to do it by debating about Belgian beer and that, you, that we are going to have meetings every Tuesday evening and I'm going to introduce Belgian beer in Spanish to you and I give you a topic list in Spanish as well with it and you are going to bring that list next week and you have translated it into Dutch or in English in your case. Then we're learning Spanish together in a way we're both motivated. And I'm coming on Tuesday evening because... I don't want to let you down. You come on coming because you don't want to let me down. We're talking about beer and I love beer. So, you know where that is. This ends, this ends in, a, in a big holiday in Spain where we both have to talk Spanish to other people. So, there is not one way to teach somebody something. The, the, everybody is different and everybody should know how different he is in, in comparison to others. Well, and he doesn't have to compare it to others. He's just himself and he has to know where he's good at and not and use those good things to establish great, great goals. You don't have to use your things you're not good at. You, everybody has a lot of things he's good at. Just use them and you will be successful. So at Agro, we don't focus on, that, on the, all that knowledge transfer because it's about putting your sponge in the right circumstances. We focus on that. So we focus on the learning process and we focus on who are you as a person and do you know who you are as a person? And uh, by doing that, knowledge recording comes into an overdrive because you know how to put your brain in the right circumstances. So at Agra, we only focus on positive mastery, no grading, only positive feedback. And of course, we have proper chats with somebody, but we give pro proper positive feedback and that's our main intention. So... At Agra, it's about learning um, 
to embrace growth and also learning to embrace failure. Because failure is everyday life and it's the easiest way to learn. So we don't protect children from failing. We enjoy them, the pleasure of failing and reflecting on that because that's what learning should be about. Fail, reflect on it and learn how to anticipate and try again. That's what it's all about and that's what we do at home with children. So don't tell me that we can't do it because every good parent does it. Parent does it. We, we, well. so, so for instance, James Dyson, the, the vacuum cleaner guy. Well, I've, I've just read somewhere that he made 5,000 prototypes. If, we, if he would have done that at a school and they gave him a grade for that, he would have stopped after the second one or maybe earlier. He made 5,000 prototypes. So his school would say 4,999 failures. No, 4,099 um, opportunities to learn. That's what it is. And that's what we should learn children. Don't be afraid to fail. Um, and, well, we try to protect those children far too much. And we try to, uh, as, as school leaders, we try to perfect, uh, protect our teachers far too much. So nobody gets inspired to fail anymore. And that's, that means that it's at a standstill. We are promoting the standstill. So at Agra, we give everybody the chance to fail, even the teachers. If a teacher comes up to me and he asks, I want to do, I want to experiment with that, this, I tell him, if you come and ask me again, I will fire you. You should do it and tell me how it went. And of course you can fail. And your students will tell you what's bad about it. And your students will tell you what good, what's good about it. And your coworkers will tell you the same thing. And if it's great, everybody will use it. And if it's not, you can stop within three days and everybody has a great lesson about it. So um, we give them chances to fail, help them to reflect on it, help them to so ask themselves the right questions, because that's what it's all about. Ask yourself the right question when something goes wrong. Or it doesn't go wrong, but it doesn't go as expected. And that's very normal, because that's learning. <laughs> um, so a good school should let you fail every day. Because otherwise, it, it's n it doesn't want you to learn. And of course, they should let you reflect on it as well. Well, I've been talking a lot about not giving any knowledge. And so this is what I tell most children who really ask me the, the difficult questions. I tell them, well, Google it. Or even better, Google for him or her, for the expert. So for instance, a, a couple of years ago, I had some students who want to know everything about the Great Barrier Reef. And he came up to me and he said, can you introduce me to a biology teacher? And I asked them why. And they said, well, we want to know everything about the Great Barrier Reef. And, he sa and I said, you realize that he's Dutch. He's never been in Australia. He's never seen the Great Barrier Reef. I don't even know if he ever read a book about it. Why do you want to contact a biology teacher? You should contact somebody who is in Australia, who do, who's doing scientific research about it. That's the contact you need. And within a couple of days, I had 12 year olds trying to write a formal letter in English to contact the guy in Australia who's doing research about it. Because kids can find those people on the internet. And if they can't, that's the first thing I should teach them. Because then I teach them a lifelong learning lesson and they can develop themselves when they're not at school. And, and that's our main goal, to help them develop themselves and be lifelong learners outside school. They, they're gonna be like 100 years old. If they can't do that, they only will be, become 60. So um, we learn students to find it and, and we learn them to get out there because the most knowledge is outside the building. We, we don't, I don't know anything. What do I know? I know a lot about learning, but I don't know a lot about what's in the world. I've never been there. I've, been, um, I've stayed in the school since I was three years old. I never left the building. <laughs> I spent 30 hours a week in the school since I'm three. So <laughs> what do I know of the world? Um, so we promote children to leave school and come back and tell us what they learned and reflect on that because that's what, what we're good at. So at Agra, we respectfully treat everybody unequal because everybody has a whole, another learning curve and has other tools to, to handle themselves and to help themselves. We train students to embrace the fact that the future is uncertain. Uh, we train them to take a firm look at it, be amazed and confident about it so that they can grow for life. And with that, we train them so they know that learning is a social activity. They can't do that on their own. It's not possible to do that on your own. Networking is a two-way street and you can do it with everybody. With, with me as a teacher, but also with your co-worker or with the parent of another co-worker or co-student. Um, and so we want them to become the social networkers of the future.
And so, getting back to the first slide, please forget what you know about teaching and how schools are organized and start with what you really know about learning and organize it that way. 